first in a series of tutorials looking at how to create and import clothing items into the space virtual world. To follow this tutorial, you need to have installed Unity. Uh, you need to have registered at the curator.sign.space website, and you need to have imported the space editor pack into uh, your Unity uh, project, which should give you the space menu item in the top um, uh, menu uh, in Unity. So clothing items is a wide range of uh, goods, uh, uh, items that are bound to the mesh of the, of the avatar and also accessories, swords or tails or horns, whatever it may be. What I'm going to show just for this basic tutorial is uh, a pair of boots. Um, so I'm going to find the female, the standard female space avatar. And I'm going to drag that into this empty scene. Um, so I'm going to search for female and you will have this model in your uh, project as well. And I, I do have a whole outfit, uh, but I'm just, uh, so I'm going to grab that, some, uh, some pants, uh, top and some shoes. There we go. Uh, as you can see, the materials are already there, uh, but you can also see that there are some issues there with the feet. And so these are going to be, this is gonna be a perfect opportunity to show the automated skin deletion um, that uh, comes as part of the uh, uh, space clothing system. So to this item, I'm going to add the component, uh, make clothing or attachment. I do that on the right hand tab here which allows me to skin the, uh, the object automatically uh, to review where the automated skin deletion has been applied and to make some manual adjustments if I want to, um, and then to submit the object as a virtual good, um, either just for my inventory or to put it on sale if that's what I want to do. So um, first I'm going to define which parts of the body this uh, clothing item occupies and uh, that means that no other clothing item can uh, uh, can sit there at the same time so I really want it to be the minimal uh, uh, number of uh, bones so I'm going to say left foot and right foot I'm not going to do left leg and right leg as well because somebody might uh, easily be putting some other um, costume item there and now I'm coming to the layer drop down here. Now, this is pretty cool. Uh, as well as deleting automatically the skin of the avatar underneath the clothing item, uh, we also uh, intelligently delete clothing items uh, uh, underneath each other according to the layer that they're assigned here. So I'm, I'm gonna set these boots to close fitting, which you can see is the middle of five layers that we offer. And so anything that is um, loose fitting uh, will um, sit over these, and then the boot mesh will be diluted underneath them, like a baggy pair of trousers. Uh, and similarly, of course, if, if you wear the same boots with a tight pair of jeans that are set to skin tight, then the jeans mesh will be deleted underneath uh, the boots. So if you imagine these boots have got this funny spike on the knee, if I'm wearing a loose pair of pants and then my avatar bends its knees, that mesh won't stick out through uh, the pants mesh. Um, and obviously if something's skin tight, like a tight pair of pants, like the ones that she's wearing, uh, then no part of those pants will stick out through maybe the ankle of the boot or anything like that because it'll all be deleted inside, uh, inside the boots. Uh, next you can see obscurance distance here. It's set to 0.01, which is one centimeter. Um, this is um, uh, our avatars are essentially squishy. And what this does is where the um, uh, where the clothing object uh, has a hem, effectively, where, where the flesh is exposed uh, uh, um, from underneath the clothing item. So on this outfit, uh, 
the arms and the and the front of the open front of the top. Um, the skin will be uh, slightly uh, pushed in underneath the clothing item, so uh, so a tight skin tight item uh, retains its own shape, and the flesh is uh, is slightly compressed. And you can alter that. You might make it 0 0.005, just um, uh, five millimeters, or you might make it larger. That's a variable you can fiddle with, but it's set to set to one percent. Uh, sorry, set to one centimeter. Now, I'm not going to tick skip deletion because I want the skin deletion processes to take place. You might uh, have uh, cases where you uh, don't want the skin deletion to occur. But I am going to tick keep materials always uh, because in this basic tutorial, uh, I am not doing any variations on this pair of boots. So I just have one pattern, one texture, one uh, material, and I want to retain that through as I submit it uh, to... Um, to the store. Um, if you have one mesh and then a range of patterns, a range of materials, you would leave keep materials always unticked and then there's a separate process that I'll show in a different tutorial for how you submit the different patterns uh, that are going to sit on a single mesh and it sets them up automatically for you in the store as different um, saleable items. Uh, but for this one I'm going to keep it simple so I'm going to leave that ticked and it's going to pull the materials through. Uh, the process. Uh, it's not an attachment, so I'm not going to uh, leave that ticked. I'll just show you that if you do tick it, everything gets simpler because there's no skin deletion. You just attach the object, whether it's a sword or whatever it is, you, you, you find the bone it's going to be attached to, position it accordingly, and then you're ready to, uh, uh, to, to run it. Um, but uh, I am going to untick that because these boots are not an attachment. So uh, I'm going to convert to skinned, um, which is automatically skinning the object. Now our automatic skinning system uh, is very, very good for anything skin tight. If you're doing something that's loose, uh, then you'll probably want to do your own manual skilling as, skinning as you would do um, uh, for any other platform. Uh, but if you've got uh, an outfit like this one, skin tight clothes, the automated skinning does everything that you need. And uh, uh, the deletion zones, uh, I will show you, uh, allow you to manually override the automated skin deletion that we're about to see when I click prepare. Uh, I suspect for this uh, object, I'm not going to actually need to use those, but I'll show you uh, what they look like and uh, we'll do a separate tutorial on working with those. So I run the process and now you can see all of these red cubes are showing me where the skin is going to be deleted. And um, as far as I can see, that's done. A, the automated process has done a pretty robust job. I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, where the uh, obscurance takes place, the um, squishy flesh, uh, you get little yellow dots, uh, but there are no incidents of that on this uh, item. You'll see that again in a different tutorial. Uh, this is all, th these bits are, are fairly straightforward. Um, uh, I'll show you uh, what the zones look like. If I click to add the deletion zone, you can see it gives me a box uh, that I can resize. Uh, and um, it just allows me to, um, uh, to uh, modify the automated process that's happened. The preservation zone uh, is, works exactly the same way. It's very useful where you've got maybe um, open-topped shoes where you really want to um, get in there and, and have a very precise um, control over which, which bits of the flesh are visible. Uh, but for a simple pair of shoes, like a pair of boots, closed pair of boots like this, it's not necessary. The automated process as far as, is fine as far as I can see. Um, so really, in terms of preparing the object itself, uh, I am done. And all I need to do now is add the virtual good script, which is a generic component. You uh, may well have seen it in some of the other uh, tutorials. So I type in virtual good uh, and add it. This is going to let me uh, uh, productize, I, I suppose, the, uh, the object, um, uh, price it if I'm putting it on sale. Um, it, uh, uh, obviously is a clothing item so the first drop down I set it as clothing uh, I'm going to open this description panel and uh, I'm going to say they're called space boots 
Um, I, I do have to give a little description as well. It won't you let you submit without uh, uh, a few lines in there, a few words in there. Brand is our brand, SWE. Uh, and I'm going to add a couple of textures because I am going to put these in the store. As with other tutorials, these need to be PNG files, 430 by 430 for the store item, 96 by 96 for the um, inventory icon. Uh, the, I'm leaving them on sale. Uh, the rating is for everybody. Uh, I'll put the developer details in as well. And the category here is um, a pair of shoes. Now, as with other virtual goods uh, where you may have seen in the tutorials, the submit button at the bottom here is grayed out. That's because I'm working on the version uh, in the scene. And what I need to do is move this finished um, uh, uh, object into the project. So I'm just going to rename it so I don't write over the, uh, the original uh, object and then I'm going to drag it into this uh, folder in the project and now you can see I have a, a, a copy in the project and uh, it's got all the same details in it uh, but the submit button is live. So I click submit and it gets sent to the servers and I get an email confirming when it's been processed. And um, we'll be able to review it before then pushing it from the preview server to the live servers where it will be on sale. So I'm in world and I'm barefoot. I can see them in the shop here. So I can preview my own uh, uh, avatar wearing them. I can see the skin deletion is working. I'm not going to customize them. I'll cover that in a second uh, tutorial, uh, but I can go into my inventory here and um, go into clothes and they're at the bottom here. And uh, so as I wear them, uh, now you can see I can use the avatar inspector uh, and zoom the camera in on the boots and here you can see uh, the skin deletion has worked and that is how to upload a clothing item as a virtual good to the space virtual world. Mm -hmm.